Hello everybody, welcome to English Classroom. How are you all? In this video, we are going to learn a short story, The Trip of Lehola, written by Guy de Maupassant. Right, he's a French writer, French short story writer, and when you read it by its spelling, you may read it Guy de Maupassant, but the real pronunciation is Guy de Maupassant. Right, okay, anyway, The Trip of Lehola is a short story telling his experience, the experience of the author in a um, hot balloon, hot air balloon. He's traveling in a hot air balloon named Lehola. Okay, we will go deep into the story. Before that, let's know something about the author. Guy de Maupassant, Guy de Maupassant, 1815-1893, was a popular 19th century French writer considered one of the masters of the modern short story and one of its finest exponents. Okay, he's one of the um, masters of short story and he's uh, one of the great exponents of uh, short story. Okay, he's French. The short story called The Trip of Lehola appeared in the Figaro in 1887 under the title From Paris to Haste. Okay, so it, it was its first name, From Paris to Haste. The Trip of Lehola is about the author's ride in a hot air balloon. So it's about his experience in a hot air balloon, his ride. Okay. How interesting does the earth look when viewed from a different angle from far away? So we usually see the earth standing on it, right? So what happens if you leave the earth, you go somewhere and look at the earth, how beautiful, how interesting it look from out there. Let's read the trip of Lehola, which chronicles Mupassan's rides in a balloon called Lehola. So it was his ride in a balloon called Lehola and what happened, how, uh, what uh, experiences did he have and uh, he experienced uh, explains, he uh, describes everything in detail and we'll go through it now. Okay, let's begin. The trip of Lehola. On the morning of July 8th, I received the following telegram. So, uh, the author himself is the narrator, he narrates the story. Okay, so Gid, Gid Mopassan is the narrator here and he narrates. On the morning of July 8th, I received, the narrator received the following telegram. Fine day, always my predictions, Belgian frontier, baggage and servants leave at noon at the social session, beginning of maneuvers at three, so I'll wait for you at the works from five o'clock on, Joyce. So it's a telegram message. Usually a telegram message um, used to be short and to the point, right? And it need not to be a complete sentence. Right, just uh, parts of sentences. Just you have to just convey the message. Need not write it in a fully and beautifully sentences. Right? Okay. So here it just says fine day. So it's a fine day today. Always my prediction. I already predicted, and my predictions prevails. Right? My predictions prevail. Belgian frontier baggage. And, so uh, we'll be there in Belgium uh, frontier baggage and servants live at noon at the social session, so all the uh, luggage, baggage and the servants will be leaving at noon. Uh, the works from five, uh, uh, beginning of maneuvers at three, so the works, the movements, uh, the works regarding the air balloons movement will be starting by three o'clock in the afternoon. So I'll wait for you at the works from five o'clock on. So I'll be waiting for you from uh, five o'clock onwards in the evening, Joyce. So the telegram was sent by Joyce. Okay, at five o'clock sharp, I entered the gas works of La Villette. So at five o'clock sharp, the author, Gide Mopassan, entered the gas work. The balloon is lying in the country, in the courtyard, and has the appearance of a cake made of yellow cloth, flat on the ground under a rope. So as he entered the gas work, he saw the balloon. It was not filled, it was not inflated, it, it is just deflated and it was lying. You can see how does it look like a deflated balloon, right? So it was there in the lying in the courtyard and has the appearance of a cake made of yellow cloth, right? The balloon was yellow in color. So as it was deflated, it looked like a cake made of yellow cloth, uh, flat on the ground under a rope and it was flat on the ground and there were ropes on it, okay. Two or three hundred people are looking at it. So around there were so many people, three or uh, two or three hundred people, and they were looking at it, sitting or standing, and some are examining the basket, right? And uh, to the balloon, 
a basket will be attached right so they some are examining the basket a nice little square basket for a human cargo and there were a nice little basket square basket you can see the image here it looks like somewhat like this you know one second <clears throat> Uh, the balloon, uh, the basket you can see is quite a small beautiful balloon right uh, it, it's there for carrying human beings you can see in the image right so basket for a human cargo bearing on its side in gold letters on a mahogany plate the words lehola so on the uh, basket just like this there, there was a mahogany plate on which it was written lehola it's the name of the a balloon right suddenly the people begin to stand back suddenly they started to stand back for the gas in is beginning to enter into the balloon through a long tube of yellow cloth because so far it was lying there on the earth uh, motionless just and now it started the air started to be pumped inside the balloon and it started to move a bit then the people started to stay back okay uh, through a long tube of yellow cloth which lies on the soil and the tube cloth lies on the soil swelling and undulating like an, an enormous worm so it, as the gas started to move in the uh, tube started to um, grow big right swell and undulating means uh, moving in a smooth way up and down just like some kind of worms you must have seen right undulating means uh, up and down moving up and down like an enormous worm just just like a big worm but another thought another particular uh, picture occurs to every mind it is thus that nature itself nourish, nourishes being until their birth for some people who thinks it may appear just like how does nature nurtures a being alive right a, an animal or a man to its birth uh, just like the poet says the tube that lies there on the soil is just like umbilical cord you know through which the nature feed the uh, baby until its birth just like that the author feels that the tube that uh, brings air uh, gas to the balloon is just like an um, umbilical cord and through this one it feeds the uh, balloon until its birth once it's filled this will be disconnected right just like that uh, and he compares it to the birth of a baby a baby is uh, fed through the umbilical cord from his, his mother right okay then the creature that will rise soon begins to move and the attendance of captains uh, joys as lehola grows larger spread and put in a in place the net which covers it so that the pressure will be regular and equally distributed at every point so the creature the creator the, uh, the author means the balloon he just considers it to be a creature right the creature that will rise it will rise because now the process has been started right uh, the process until its birth has been started the creature that will rise soon begins to move it will start to move soon and the attendance of captain jovis now the helpers of captain jovis as lehola grows larger now the uh, balloon started to grow larger and larger so now the helpers of captain jovis spread and put in place the net which covers it so they started to put net around the balloon to co covers it uh, which covers it so that the pressure will be regulate regular and equally distributed at every every point so that by doing so the pressure of the uh, gas given into the balloon will be distributed everywhere the crowd has begun to talk and some men who appear to be specialists affirm with authority that we shall come down before reaching the uh, fortifications right then the people standing around they start to talk they just discuss and some people who looks like uh, specialists they uh, they uh, assure you that this balloon is not going to reach its destination it will come back before reaching its destination fortification means uh, some kind of walls or end right uh, or some kind of castle okay so here the uh, other means the balloon will return before it reach, reaches its uh, destination some people just opine okay several other things have been criticized in the in this novel type of balloon with which we are about to experiment and several other things because it was uh, in 19th century right uh, in 18 um th this took place in 19th century then it was a novel type nowadays it's there are so many uh, hot balloon rides right so at that time it was just a novel type of journey so they, they are trying to uh, 
do an experiment, right? So, uh, several other things have been criticized in this novel type of balloon. So, several other things, so many things has, have been uh, criticized in this type because it was a new way of traveling, right? Novel experiment it is, um, novel type of balloon with which we are about to experiment with so much pressure and success, with which uh, so much pleasure and success. So, now we are going to leave this earth, we are going to ride with so much pleasure and success with this balloon and there's so many criticism have been going on this thing right this metal okay meanwhile the balloon is growing slowly but surely so by all the criticism has been all the criticism have been going on and by then the balloon also was getting bigger and bigger okay while captain Jovis and his assistants are busy with the last details the travelers go to dine in the canteen of the guest works according to the established custom so all the works, the uh, final works have been going on and by this time the travelers, the, the person who, who are going to ride in this hot air balloon went to take their lunch, right, went to dine, uh, they, not, not lunch, they go to dine in the canteen of the gas works according to the established custom, that was the custom, right. So all the final works have been going on, uh, is being, uh, all the final works are going on and by then the people who are to ride this hot air balloon went to the uh, canteen to dine okay to take their food okay when we come out again the balloon is swaying enormous and transparent so after finishing uh, our dinner we came outside and then the balloon was enormous it was so big and transparent right as it it has gone so so big it has been transparent a prodigious golden foot a big golden foot a fantastic pair which is still ripening yes it's a fantastic it looks like a fantastic pear fruit which is still ripening covered by the last rays of the setting sun right and as it, it was uh, covered by the rays of the settings and it's just look like golden in color right now the basket is attached the barometers are brought now the basket is attached to the balloon and barometers are brought barometers or uh, meters to check the per air pressure right they are going to ride uh, in uh, in the space actually uh, in the sky uh, in the atmosphere right then they have to check what is the pressure of the air so how to move uh, things like that to, to decide their movement they, they need barometer then barometers are brought the siren which we will blow to our hearts hearts content is also brought then the siren also uh, has been brought uh, for their happiness right also also the two trumpets the air eatables, the overcoats and raincoats and all the small articles that can go with the men in the flying basket. So all the things have been brought, right, as uh, two trumpets, eatables, overcoats, raincoats and all the small, small articles which can be carried in the balloon have been brought. Okay, Captain Joyce is now ready. Captain Joyce, the brave man, is now ready and calls all the passengers uh, Lieutenant Mallet jumps aboard. He calls all the passengers. Then Lieutenant Mallet, one of the passengers, uh, jumps aboard, climbing first on the aerial net between the basket and the balloon. And he climbs on the aerial net between the basket and the balloon. You can see between uh, the basket and the balloon, there is something like a net, right? You can see here. So he climbs on the um, net, right? Uh, Malas jump aboard, climbing first on the aerial net between the basket and the balloon, from which he will watch. So, uh, being there on the net, he will watch around, and he he has to direct, he has to give directions to. Okay, and balloon from which he will watch. During the night, the movements of Lehola across the skies, um, as the officer on watch, standing on a, a starboard watches the course of a ship, just like an officer on watch in a ship. In a ship, there there will be an officer on watch standing on starboard. Starboard is a, a place there in the ship where um, the officer on watch will stand and he will observe if any uh, impediments, any barrier, any problems is there for them for the course of their journey. 
of the ship right so just like that here in the case of this balloon uh, lieutenant malice he jumps he comes and climbs on the net the rope between the basket and the balloon and he his duty is to watch everywhere if uh, the journey is uh, fine and anything uh, problematic is there right so just uh, from which he will watch during the night especially in night the movements of lehola across the skies uh, yes as the officer on watch standing on starboard watches the course of a ship just like uh, in ship there is uh, an officer on watch just like that the same way here we are we also have an officer to watch and it is a uh, lieutenant malice okay then monsieur then M means monsieur, right? It's a French uh, way of addressing people just like mister. Okay. Monsieur Etrin Bear gets in after him. So uh, after Mallet, Etrin Bear gets in after him. Then comes uh, Monsieur Paul Bessent, then Monsieur Patrice Iris, and I get in last. So all these people got inside the basket, but the basket is too heavy for the balloon. So all these, as all these people got inside, the basket was too heavy for the balloon, considering the long trip to be taken and Miss uh, Monsieur Iris has to get out. So as the, these people were too much for the balloon, one will have to leave the basket, then Monsieur Iris has to get out. Not without great regret. Actually, he was with great regret. He didn't want to leave the basket, but he had to do that. Monsieur Joliet, standing erect on the edge of the basket, begs the ladies in very gallant terms to stand aside a little, for he is afraid he might throw sand on their heads in rising. So, um, Monsieur Joliet, he's standing erect, he's standing on the edge of the basket, right? He, he's just stood up there on the edge of the basket and begs the ladies in every gallant, in, in very gallant terms, in a very uh, respectful manner. He asks the ladies standing aside, uh, standing there to stand aside, to move a bit, uh, to move back, for he is afraid he might throw sand on their heads in rising. So, uh, all, all the movements of the balloon is by throwing things, right? Uh, it's called ballast. Ballast means a kind of material. It can be sometimes sand, sometimes gravel, sometimes water, right? So, by throwing things in their uh, overboard, that decides the movements of the balloon. So, uh, at the time of rising, he will have to throw some sand and those sand may uh, uh, fall there on their heads. So, they, he asks them to step back. Then he commands, let it loose, and cutting with one stroke of his knife, the ropes that hold the balloon to the ground, he gives Lehola its liberty. Right, let it loose. Then he is going to let the balloon loose. It, it has been tied to the ground, right, using a rope. Let it loose, and cutting with one stroke of his knife, with one stroke of his knife, he cut the ropes that holds the balloon to the ground. He gives Lehola its liberty. So, no. Uh, so far, uh, Lehola was tied to the earth. As he cut the rope, he gave Lehola its liberty and she, she started to soar in the sky. In one second, we fly skyward. In a second, we started to fly skyward. Nothing can be heard. Nothing, no sound can be heard. We float, we rise, we fly, we glide through. Okay, so the basket uh, having uh, four or five members only these are the people they are in the basket and uh, an enormous balloon and they started to rise and they uh, float they fly they glide okay our friends shout with glee and applaud the friends in the balloon they started to um, <clears throat> they started to applaud and shout uh, with glee but we uh, our friends means their friends in the earth they started to upload they started to shout with glee but we hardly hear, hear them but we do not hear them we hardly see them we do not see them we are already so far we have left the earth and we reached so far so high what are we really leaving the, these people down there are we really leaving these people down is it possible paris spreads out beneath us so by looking downward, we can see Paris spread out in great expanse, spread out beneath us, a dark bluish patch. It's just a dark bluish patch of land cut by its street, cut by streets, and from which rise here and there domes, towers, steeples. And from here and there, you can see some domes, uh, steeples, and some skyscrapers, okay, towers, some great buildings, skyscrapers can be, skyscrapers can be seen, nothing else. 
okay, only a small uh, uh, blue patch of land from which uh, here and there you can see some domes. Uh, domes means a uh, globe-like uh, structure built on a building, right? Okay, domes and towers, steeples. Then around it, the plain, the country traversed by long roads. Then uh, around it, the plain place traversed means crossed, cut into pieces by long roads, thin and white amidst green fields of a tender or a dark green. So I mean, amidst the green field or t uh, tender green or dark green fields, you can see the uh, road cuts it away, just at, uh, cross it here and there and woods almost black and the woods look like almost black okay the sun which we could no longer see down below now reappears so when we were there on the earth we couldn't see the sun then but now it reappears we can see the sun again in fact we can see whether we are rising or sinking only by throwing a cigarette paper out of the basket so uh, all around it's just uh, nothing right it's just emptiness or uh, some kind of clouds or something you can't see trees uh, buildings nothing right so you can't they move but they do not know uh, where they move it is upward or downward only by a piece of paper thrown out of the basket by uh, thrown out of the basket uh, shows them uh, if they are moving upward or downward right we can see whether we are rising or sinking only by throwing a cigarette paper out of the basket so when we throw a cigarette paper out of the basket now and then uh, if the papers up uh, this paper appears to fall down like a stone it means that the balloon is rising so when we throw a paper and if the paper goes down that means we are rising and when we throw a paper outside and the paper shoot up it goes uh, upward that means we are uh, descending okay the balloon is rising if it appears to shoot skyward the balloon is descending that's how they do not they know because uh, no other no other things are there around to show them if they are rising or sinking only by throwing something outside they can see if they are uh, descending or ascending okay the two barometers mark about 500 meters then in the barometer it shows 500 meters away from the earth and we gaze with enthusiastic admiration at the earth uh, with a great admi admiration with love uh, with affection we uh, look at the earth we are leaving and to which we are not attached in any way and we <clears throat> we are leaving the earth and in no way we are attached to the earth now right it looks like a colored map so looking uh, away from 500 feet you can see it's just like a colored map right a uh, colored map an immense plan of the country yes just an immense plan a great plan of the country all its noises however rise to our ears were distinctly easily recognizable now all the voices that rise from the earth can be uh, recognizable distinctly uh, it we can differentiate between the sounds what sounds which sound everything can be understood right easily recognizable we hear the sound of the wheels rolling in the streets and the snap of a whip right the whip with with which they ride the horses you know with whip and the cries of the drivers the rolling and whistling of trains and the laughter of small boys running after one another all these voices have been heard there every time we pass over a village the noise of children's voices is heard above the rest and with the greatest distinctness so they are moving right so whenever they pa pass on a village they can hear the different sounds and each time they pass this they hear the sounds of the children distinctly right their voice is heard distinctly okay the view is superb it's dark on the earth but we are still in the light so they, while they are looking downward from the sky it's dark there in the earth but there but the place where are they it is just light and and it is now past 10 o'clock now we begin to hear slight country noises now it's uh, past 10 o'clock in the evening and uh, they now we begin to hear slight country noises the double cry of the quill in in particular so uh, the double double cry of the quill quill is kind of bird right and we can hear the sound of the bird then the mewing of cats and the barking of dogs only animals and bird sounds are heard surely the dogs have scented the balloon they must have sent it they have got the smell of the balloon i think they have seen it and have given the alarm they have seen the balloon and they are giving alarm to their owners right their masters uh, 
We can hear them barking all over the plane. So whenever we pass through the plane, we can hear the dogs barking at our uh, balloon all over the plane and making the identical noises they make when baying at the moon and sometimes they howl right looking at the moon they howl and sometimes these dogs also make the same voice looking at our balloon they howl baying at the moon the cows also seem to wake up in the barns then the cows also seems to be wake up for we can hear them lowing because they are also making their noise lowing means the noise the, the sound of the cow right all the beasts are scared and moved all the beasts are scared and moved uh, before the aerial monster that is passing so while the aerial monster means the balloon the big balloon that moves through the air as it moves all the beasts uh, including dogs cows uh, are get scared and they make noise the delicious odors of the soil rise towards us the smell of hay of flowers of the moist verdant earth perfuming the air so they started to get a beautiful uh, a sweet smell right the delicious odors of the soils smell of the soil rise towards them and the smell of hay uh, the straws right of flowers of the moist of uh, wetness right or uh, something wet word and earth the green beautiful earth perfuming perfuming the air, air so all these things make the air perfumed sweet smelled at times we arise and then descend sometimes they rise away from the earth then descend sometimes they come close to the earth every few minutes lieutenant mallet suspended in his cobweb of netting says to captain joyce we are descending throw a half handful so every time uh, it is um, captain joyce uh, no it, it is lieutenant mallet who is suspended in the cobweb of netting as we said in the beginning uh, uh, lieutenant mallet he is there in the net between the balloon and the basket and he is on watch right so every now and then lieutenant mallet suspended in his cobweb of netting says to captain joyce we are descending so he says we are descending throw down a half handful throw down a half handful and then captain who is talking and laughing with us with a bag of ballast then it is uh, uh, malice mallet gives uh, instruction then captain who is with them with the uh, travelers he is cracking jokes and talk uh, talks with them and he will uh, um, and there is a bag full of ballast with him ballast i told you a substance such as water sand or metal that is carried in a ship or a large balloons to help them remain steady so ballast is something like sand or some metals water or something like that uh, carried in a uh, in the basket to keep it steady and uh, the captain is having the ballast here so one, once mr mallet asked him uh, a handful throw down a hand, half a handful then uh, he he would take the captain would take a, a half full um, a pinch of the mallet uh, sorry the ballot <clears throat> then uh, mr joyce the captain will take a handful of the ballast and he will throw away okay between his legs so the captain is having the ballast between his legs takes a handful of sand then he will, he will take a handful of sand in his hand uh, out of the bag and throws it overboard then he throws it away from the uh, basket that's how they move right so just by throwing uh sand they keep the balloon steady right yes nothing is more amusing more delicate more interesting than the maneuver right so nothing is more amusing nothing is uh more enjoyable more delicate more interesting than the maneuver maneuver means uh, the movements then the maneuvering means here an action or movement that needs care or skill to perform here the balloons right so nothing more delicate nothing more interesting nothing more enjoyable than the movements of the balloon the ride of a balloon it's an enormous toy the balloon is a big great toy free and docile it's free it's liberated and docile means uh, it follows your instruction it's very obeying right obedient quite and easy to influence persuade or control it's very quite easy to control a balloon is very easy to control it is docile means it always follows your instruction which obeys with surprising sensitiveness so whatever you want it to do it obeys you so that's why it's docile but it is also and before all the slave of the wind 
when it's the slave of the wind too it's uh, you uh, or if, if it is uh, obeys you still it's a slave of wind because if the wind started to blow uh, stronger it will follow the wind right it will be carried away by the wind okay and um, the slave of the wind uh, which we cannot control the wind we cannot control right a pinch of sand half a sheet of paper one or two drops of water the boards of the chicken we which we have just eaten thrown overboard makes it go up quickly so that's how they control the uh, balloon sometimes something thrown outside makes the balloon go up right sometimes something uh, uh, thrown outside makes it uh, comes down so it's uh, it's as per the uh, pressure on the earth they decide what to do and they know it well so uh, Lieutenant Mallet give instruction and the captain uh, undertakes the mission. That's how they uh, comes up and down, right? So just a piece of paper or some uh, drops of water or a handful of sand makes this journey possible. Okay. The earth sleeps now, or rather men sleep on earth. Now the earth is sleeping because all the people on earth are speaking are sleeping for the beast awakened by the side of our balloon announce our approach everywhere. So, because uh, the beast, the animals, those who saw our balloon approaching, they announce, they they give alarm, they warn the people, right? They, they give announce, they announce our approach everywhere. They announce our approach. A strong and continuous odor of gas can be plainly observed. Now, a strong uh, gas can be observed. The smell of gas comes can be plainly observed. We must have encountered a current of warm air. So we must have encountered, we met with uh, warm air and the balloon expands because of the warm air, the balloon expands, losing its invisible blood by the escape wall. So as we encountered with some uh, warm current of air uh, through the escape wall, it is losing its invisible air. Invisible, uh, invisible blood means the air. Uh, that's what fills the balloon, right? So inside the balloon, it is just the air. So through the escape wall, there is an escape wall for the balloon attached at the top usually. So through the uh, escape wall, the uh, air has been um, loose. They have been losing the air so that uh, the pressure inside the balloon will be kept uh, normal. Okay. We are rising. The earth no longer gives back the echo of our trumpets. So they are rising. So as they blow their trumpets, they do not hear the echo of it. We have risen almost 2,000 feet. They have risen towards the sky almost 2,000 feet. It is not light enough for us to consult the instruments. Actually, there now, they don't have light enough to consult their instrument. They have carried barometers and other instruments with them. But at present, they can't use it because they don't have light there. We only know that the rice papers falls from us like dead butterflies. So when we throw uh, rice papers, we see them falling just like dead butterflies. That means they are rising, right? That we are rising, always rising. So they are, that means they are rising and rising. Now it's almost 2,000 feet away from the sky, away from the earth. Okay, we can no longer see the earth. A light mist separates us from it. So because at present we can't see the earth, a light mist separates us between because it creates uh, some kind of, a, it makes a curtain between us and the earth and we can't see it. it. It has been covered with the mist, right? And above our head tinkles a world of stars and above our head we can see so many stars, right? From earth when we look, so many stars have been covered with uh, clouds. But for, the, for them, now there are no clouds, no more clouds because they have uh, uh, survived the clouds. They are above the clouds so they can see a world full of stars above their head, right? A silvery light appears before us and makes the sky turn pale. Then suddenly they notice the silvery light comes and it makes the uh, sky pale and suddenly as if it is rising from unknown depths behind the horizon below us rises the moon on the edge of a cloud so as they were looking down they could see at the edge of some cloud this uh, the moon was rising turning the whole place into pale right rises the moon on the edge of a cloud it seems to be coming from below yes for them it the uh, moon moon seemed to be coming from below while we are looking down upon it from a great height Yes, they thought that the moon is coming from below and they are looking at from great height, right? Uh, leaning on the edge of our basket, leaning on the edge of their basket, they are looking down to see the uh, moon. Okay. 
like an audience on a balcony, just like audience on a balcony uh, observing things, they come out, uh, closer to the brink, uh, closer to the um, wall, and they'll be looking outside, right, leaning, right? Just like that, they have to uh, come closer to the uh, basket's edge and look outside to see the uh, sun, sorry, to see the moon. Clear and round, the moon was just clear and perfect round. It emerges from the clouds and slowly rises in the sky. It emerges from the cloud and slowly, slowly, gradually it rises to the sky. The earth no longer seems to exist. Now, no earth, no sign of earth is seen. The earth no longer seems to exist, right? We do not feel like earth exists anyway. It's buried in milky vapors that resembles a sea. The earth has been uh, um, covered right buried in milky vapors that resembles a sea so ev everywhere it is just like milky vapors and it looks like sea it, it was uh, and no in unending vastness right so there is no uh, limitation no border has been is seen so the earth has been submerged in this uh, vapors we are now alone in space with the moon no we are alone in the space along with the moon which looks like another balloon traveling opposite to us so the balloon is seen it's big and it's it just it looks like uh, just like another balloon traveling with us right opposite to us and our balloon which shines in the air appears like another large moon and uh, our balloons looks like a large moon the the moon looks like another balloon and our balloon looks like uh, another moon larger moon uh, which shines opposite to us and our balloon which shines in the air appears like another larger moon a world wandering in the sky our balloon is just a world wandering in the sky amid the stars among the stars through infinity right because there is no blockage no barrier it's infinite right so through infinity we are we are a world traveling through the sky through the infinity we no longer speak think nor live we float along through space in delicious inertia right so we the travelers in the basket we do not speak we do not think we do not live we just float along through the space delicious in delicious inertia means without having any anything to do right just lazily without having any action we move inertia means resistance or disinclination to motion action or change so no motion no action no change we just move the same way we do right we have become something indescribable birds who do not even have to flap their wings so just we have just become something inexplicable something indescribable right just like birds who don't have even to flap their wings right just like birds and for birds to fly they have to flap their wings for us we do not have to do anything it simply moves without having any problem okay all memory minds, all trouble from our thoughts, we have no more regrets, plans, nor hopes. So all things from our mind have been gone. All memory minds, all trouble from our thoughts, we have no more regrets, no more plans, no more hopes. Everything is blank now. We look, we feel, we wildly enjoy the fantastic journey. So we, we forget everything, all the worries, all the memories, all the responsibilities and all the duties and all the plans we forget. We just feel and enjoy the, uh, the fantastic joy. Nothing in the sky but the moon and ourselves. In the sky there is nothing, just ourselves and the moon. We are a wandering, traveling world like our sisters. We are just a wandering world, just like a planet, right? We are wandering, traveling world, like our sisters, sister, the planets. Sisters means, here he means the planet. So they look like another planet, right? And this little world carries five men who have left the earth. And in this little world, there are five men who have left the earth and who have almost forgotten it. And they have almost forgotten the earth because they have so many other things to, things to think and enjoy, right? The barometers mark 1200 meters. Now in the barometers, it marks 1200 meters, then 13, 14, 1500, and the little rice paper still fall about us. And it shows uh, 1500, and still when we throw paper, it just go down, that means they are rising they keep rising right we are now at 2000 meters now they are at 2000 meters we go up to 2350 they are going up to 2350 meters 
away from the earth then the balloon stops after reaching there the balloon stops we blow the siren and are surprised that no one answers us from the stars so after reaching 2350 meters away from the earth they blow the siren and no response is there from the star they, they wonder that there is no response from the stars we are now going down rapidly now they are going down rapidly one share mallet keep crying throw out more ballast throw out more ballast so he keep crying he keeps crying because uh, throw more ballast means throw more sand so by doing so that's how they regulate they control the movements of the balloon right so throw more ballast he keeps crying and the sand and stones that we throw over come back into our faces as if they are going up so as we throw them they come back to our faces because they are going downwards now right so as they throw things it goes upward so as they throw the sands and uh, stones outside it comes to their face come back into our faces as if they are going up thrown from below towards the stars just like uh, the st uh, the stones were thrown like uh, thrown towards the stars from below okay so rapid is our descent so their descent was that rapid that first they were coming downwards in a very speed right here is the earth we are where are we here is the earth so we we can see the earth now but where are we what which place on earth it is now past midnight now it's time past midnight and we are crossing a broad dry well cultivated country and at that time they were passing through a, a vast broad dry well cultivated country to the right is a large city and far farther away to the left is another so to the right now there is a city a big one and farther away to the left there is another city right uh, but suddenly from the earth appears a bright fairy light it disappears reappears and once more disappears but one hardly has time to see them as the balloon passes as quickly as the wind so sometimes they saw some kind of light comes goes again comes again goes but they couldn't identify what is it because um, the balloon was so quick and so rapid it was moving as wind we are now quite near the earth and bear exclaims there comes they come close to earth and bear exclaims look at that what's that running over there in the fields uh, can you see something they are running over the fields isn't it a dog isn't it a dog indeed something is running along the ground with great speed and this something seems to jump over ditches roads trees with such ease so they as they are uh, riding in very speed their, their balloon moves very in, in a high speed and at that time they see something they are in the field running so fast and that thing crossed the ditches roads trees everything with with such ease that we could not understand what it might be and they couldn't understand what kind of creature is that what's it it runs so fast and it can cover all these things in such an ease the captain loves it's the shadow of our balloon it's not an animal it's the shadow of our balloon so as the balloon moves so fast the shadow is also moving so fast and it, it can cover everything right because not, nothing can block the shadow right so it's shadow of our balloon it will grow as we descend so when we come downward it will grow big right i distinctly hear a great noise of uh, foundries now i can hear the sound of foundries foundries means workshop or factory for casting metal right uh, foundry is um, a workshop right so from where they uh, make uh, some tools right so he, he could hear the sound of foundries in the distance and according to the polar star which we have been observing all night we are heading straight for Belgium so as per the polar star which was which was they were observing throughout the night uh, they are heading towards the Belgium so uh, for people who uh, uh, travel through ship they use stars to um, to decide to uh, which direction they are moving right to identify to which direction they are moving and to di which direction they have to right so based on the stars it is decided so they were observing the polar star and as per the star they are mo moving towards belgium our siren and our two horns are continually calling right they, they are calling the siren and the um, trumpet horns we bellow, bellow means shout, utter in loud, powerful voice. They shout, where are we? The balloon is going so rapidly. So they, they have to know which place is it because they do not, they were uh, disconnected from the earth and suddenly they came down to the earth and the place where they, where, uh, they came so close is not 
a place which, which is familiar for them, so they have to inquire, where are we? But the balloons is going so rapidly that the bewildered man has not even time to answer us. But the balloon was so fast that the bewildered, the confused man who heard our voice were not able to answer us. Yes, they heard our voice, but they got confused. Before they start to answer, our balloon moves so fast. The growing shadow of Lehola, as large as a child, child's ball, is fleeing before us over the fields, roads, and the woods. Then the shadow, the growing shadow of the balloon flees in front of us, right? In, before us, over the fields and roads and woods, it moves so fast. It goes along steadily preceding us by about a quarter of a mile. Then the shadow of the balloon precedes us a quarter of a mile, right? And it steadily goes steadily. And now I am le leaning out of the basket, listening to the roaring of the wind. Now I lean out of the basket, listening to the roaring of the wind, trees and across the harvest field. So the author, uh, Geet Mopasan, st uh, started to hear some kind of uh, voice he listened to the roaring sound of the wind uh, in the trees across the harvest field i said to captain joyce how the wind blows the wind blows right he answers no those are probably waterfalls captain said no the, the, those are probably waterfalls i insist sure of my ear that knows the sound of the wind he said i'm sure it's not waterfall it's the sound of the wind from hearing it so often whistled through the rigging i, I could hear the sound of the wind it's uh, it's whistling through the rigging rigging means the system of ropes or chains employed to support a ship or ship's masts so usually in the ship master ship you can see tied uh, the mast tied to the uh, with rope to the ship right just like that for this balloon they have uh, ropes to control the balloon so uh, then through the uh, rigging he could hear the whistling of this uh, wind then joyce nudges he nudges me but not just means push against generally, especially in order to gain attention or give a signal. He just uh, uh, nudge me, he just, uh, just give me a uh, blow just like this so that I can listen to him. He fears to frighten his happy, quiet passengers for he knows full well that a storm is pursuing us. Actually, it, the sound was that of a storm which was following them. And the captain knew that before. But he didn't want to share it with his uh, fellow travelers because if he shares it with them, they will be in panic. But for now, the narrator identified it to be a wind and he, as he shared it with the um, captain, he just gave him a blow like this and uh, points him not to share with others. It's a storm, but all uh, fellow travelers will be in panic, right? Suddenly the lights of a town appears us, appear before us such a wonderful flow of fire appears below us that I think myself transported into some fairy land where precious stones are manufactured for giants. Okay, so sometimes uh, as they were uh, started to move above a city, some uh, uh, above a town, the lights appeared, such a wonderful flow of fire, a lot of light, right, below us that I myself uh, I think myself transported into some fairy land. He thought I am traveling through a fairy land where precious stones are manufactured for giants. Okay, the clouds are, so just like in a story, he started to feel seeing that place, a lot of lights from here and there glittering, right? So he started to think that this place is just like a place in fairy stories. Okay. The clouds are gathering behind us, hiding the moon. Now, as they were coming downward, the, then uh, behind them there are clouds and it covered the moon whereas towards the east the sky is growing lighter and towards the east the sky is growing lighter becoming clear blue tinged with red tinged means colored with red uh, light colored with red it's dawn so in towards the east it's getting morning right it's the time to break dawn uh, it grows rapidly now showing us all the little details of the earth and the light in the east started to grow bigger and it started to show us all the little details of the earth the tra uh, trains the brooks brooks means the uh, current of water right uh, just like stream okay the cows the gods and all this passes beneath us with surprising speed and all these things pass behind beneath us in surprising speed actually they are 
passing in surprising speed. So they, for them, they feel that all the other things be, below them are passing in surprising speed. Cooks, uh, cocks are crying, but the voice of ducks drowns everything. The cocks crow uh, because it's the morning, right? But the sound of the ducks drown all the other voice. The early rising peasants are waving their arms and crying to us, let yourself drop. So early, early rising peasants, the peasants who get up early and go to the field, they wave their hands and they ask us, let you, yourself drop, come, come down. You just drop yourself, you just land it here. But we go along steadily, we go steadily, neither rising nor falling, le leaning over the edge of the basket and watching the world fleeing under our feet. So they are, now they are not rising, not uh, descending, they are going steadily and they are looking downward to see how fast the world under them flee. Okay. And indeed, far ahead of us stretches a bright highway. So uh, far ahead of us, there is the bright highway in the light of the dawning day. Yet it looks like a river, an immense river full of islands. So in the daylight, it looks like a river. The, the great highway looked like a river full, full of um, full of islands. Okay, get ready for the descent. Christ the captain, captain asked us to get ready for the descending, we are going to land, everybody should be careful. He makes uh, Monsieur Mallet leave his net and return to the basket. Now Monsieur Mallet, uh, who has been uh, suspended there on the net, uh, uh, comes to join us in the basket. Then we pack the barometers and everything that could be injured by possible shock. So uh, when they uh, land, there may be shock, right? As they hit the earth, there may be shock. Then things, the, the instruments like barometer may get uh, damaged. So all these things were packed. Everything that could be injured by possible shocks. Monsieur Besant exclaims, look at the masts over there to the left. Uh, to the left, you can see the mast, the ship, right? We are at the sea, so we are so close to the sea. Folks have hidden it from us until then. Actually, we were they were so close to the sea, but the folks had hidden for folks covered the sea from them so that they couldn't see the sea there only now they could the sea is everywhere to the left to the opposite us it is necessary to descend within a minute or two so we have to descend we have to land now itself otherwise we will have we will be there in the sea because by the left side it is the sea and opposite it is the sea so within one or two minutes they have to land the rope to the escape wall which has been religiously enclosed in a little white bag and placed in a sight of all so that no one will touch it is unrolled and uh, Monsieur Mallet holds it in his hand while Captain Joyce looks for a favorable landing behind us. The thunder is rumbling and not a single bird uh, follows our mad flight. Okay, the, the rope the, to the escape wall. So the, to the escape wall a rope has been connected and the rope which has been religiously enclosed with utmost care, religiously it here means with utmost care and respect enclosed in a little white bag so the rope uh, enclosed in a little white bag and placed in sight of all so and it has been placed there so that everyone can see and nobody will touch because uh, once you touch the rope the escape wall will be open and the air will be going outside right so uh, so that no one will touch it's unrolled now miss uh, monsieur mallet unrolled the rope holds it in his hand while Captain Joyce look for a favorable landing and Captain Joyce look here and there where can they land uh, for a favorable place, place to land. Behind us the thunder is rumbling, they can hear the thunder and not a single bird follows our mad flight. Not a single bird, eh, no bird will follow our mad flight. We, ours were that fast and that crazy flight it was. We are passing over a canal, they were passing over a canal, the basket tramples tips over slightly, the basket started to tremble and sometimes tips over slightly, the guy rope, guy rope means a rope or line fixed to the ground to secure a tent or other structure. So the guy rope means the rope that connected the balloon to the earth, uh, that, that will be hanging from the basket, right? The guy rope touched, the guy rope um, touches the tall trees on both banks, then it touched the trees on both banks, we pass with frightful rapidity over a large farm still they are so fast so rapid and they pass over a farm from which the bewildered chickens pigeons and ducks fly away so seeing this balloon uh, moving such a uh, crazy fast the chickens pigeons and ducks they fly away while the cows cats and dogs run terrified towards the house 
and seeing them, the cows and dogs and cats uh, fly towards the house. They were frightened. Just one half bag of ballast is left, one, only half a bag of ballot left. Joyce throws it overboard and Lehorla flies lightly across the roof. Joyce threw them all, that ballast also outside. Then now uh, Lehorla slowly, lightly across the roof. It started just above the roof. The captain once more cries, the escape wall, captain cried, the escape wall, uh, Monsieur Mallet reaches for the rope and hangs to it. So reaching for the rope, he, rope, he hangs on it and we drop like an arrow. So as the uh, escape wall was opened, then they started to uh, descend just like an arrow with the slash of a knife. The cord with uh, which retains the anchor is cut. So they cut the uh, rope which was connected to the anchor and we dragged the grapple behind us then that start, the uh, anchor was dropped and the grapple grapple means uh, an iron shaft having the close hooks you know so it can uh, have a hole somewhere so the grapple this they dragged the grapple behind them through a field of beads here and there there, there is a field of beet beet roots and um, through that field they dragged the grapple take care hold fast Take care, everybody. Look out for your herds. We pass over them. Then it's instruction given by the uh, captain. You know. Then a strong shook sh shakes us. The, he asks people to hold tight. Uh, look out for your herds. Uh, ca be careful about your herd and not to hit. Uh, okay. We pass over them. Then a strong shock shakes us. Then uh, suddenly they uh, felt a strong shock. The anger, uh, anger has got has taken hold. So the anger has got hold. It has been uh, stuck somewhere. It has stuck somewhere. Look out, take a good hold, raise yourself selves by your wrist. Then the captain gives instruction for them, right? Uh, be careful, raise yourselves by your wrist. So hang on, uh, raise yourself with your hands. We are going to touch the ground. The basket does indeed strike the earth. Then the basket comes and strike the earth. Then it flies up again. Once more it falls and bounces upward again, comes down again, uh, rise up. Okay, and then it flies up again, once more it falls and bounces upward again and at last it settles on the ground. At last, after one or two bounces, it settles on the ground whilst the balloon struggles madly like a wounded beast. And at, the, at this time the a balloon just moves here and there just like a wounded beast. Peasants run towards us but they do not dare approach. So the peasants work over there, they run towards us but they are afraid to approach. For one cannot set foot on the ground until the bag is almost completely deflated because uh, it, it is an enormous balloon and it, the air has not been completely deflated so they can't come there. It's, it's a blockage in between them, right? So uh, no one can step set foot on the ground until the bag is almost completely deflated. Then, then almost at the same time as the bewildered men, some of whom showed their astonishment by jumping with the wild gestures of savages, all the cows that are grazing along the coast come towards us surrounding our balloon with a strange and comical circle of horns with eyes and blowing nostrils. So then almost at the, uh, the same time, just like the bewildered men, the same time, just like the uh, confused men, some of whom show their astonishment by jumping. Some others also come, just like the peasants, just like the human beings, some others also uh, come, uh, whom show their astonishment by jumping. They show their astonishment by jumping and with their wild gestures of savages, with, the, with their wild uh, movements, all the cows that are grazing along the coast, so many uh, cows were grazing and all of them uh, come towards us surrounding our balloon. They stood uh, in a round around our balloon with strange and comical circle of horns having horns. Uh, they, they stand around our balloon, big eyes and blowing nostrils. They had big eyes and they were blowing their nostrils with the help of the they also came to meet us. With the help of the accommodating and hospitable Belgian peasants, we are able in a short time to pack up all our materials and carry it to the station at haste. So with the help of the people in the local, uh, we could pack everything and we could uh, reach and carry things to the uh, station at haste where it's a place. Okay, we're at 20 minutes past eight. We take the train to pa for Paris and at, uh, at 20 past eight in the morning, they could get the train for Paris. The descent occurred at 3.15 in the morning. So they started to descend at 3.15 in the morning and now it's 8.20. They could get the 
um, train to Paris. Thanks to Captain Joyce, thanks to this brave man, we were able to see in a single night from far up in the sky, the setting of the sun, the rising of the moon and the dawn of a day and to go from Paris to the mouth of the Scheldt through the skies. So the narrator thanked Captain Joyce for this wonderful journey uh, and he was such a brave man even after knowing that they are followed by um, a storm. He didn't reveal anything to his fellow travelers so that he didn't want them to get in panic. Right? We were able to see the travelers, they could see in a single night from far up in the sky, they could see the setting of sun, the rising of the moon and the dawn of day, all these things they could see and to go from Paris to the mouth of Schultz through the sky, then how to go from Paris to the mouth of Schultz, it's a river, okay, uh, to the mouth of Schultz, how to go through the sky, this also they could see and it was a wonderful journey for them. Okay, so that's a story, a short story uh, written by Goit. That's a beautiful story written by Geet Mopas. written by so this is the beautiful story written by Geet Mopassa right and it's uh, his experience in a hot air balloons I hope you enjoyed it read the chapter well and understand it in detail okay thank you for watching have a great day